Hey everybody, I hope you're all cozied up with a blanket and a warm beverage because it's cold out there and I hope you're staying warm during this winter wonderful holiday season. What I'm going to do is share with you my top picks that I played in 2020 and I'm going to do it in a pretty unique way. Everyone has a top 10 list or a top 5 list and I don't think they necessarily differentiate between the intention of the game and the style of the game in a way that really includes some wonderful games that are not necessarily as deep or heavy or thematic as others. Honestly, I'm as guilty as everyone else. I love a juicy strategy game and that's just not all the games out there and I had a great great time playing games that were not that and so I felt like I struggled trying to rank my games from the year that I played in 2020 and I found that honestly just categorizing them by genre by gameplay was the best way to share with you a variety of games and not just all of those kind of complex thinker strategy games. The categories I'm going to share with you are family game, card games, flip or roll and rights, cooperative games, and lastly I will give you more than one suggestion for my favorite strategy game that I played in 2020. Another thing to keep in mind is that some games were released in 2019 but didn't make it to the states for distribution until 2020 and there are just a couple 2019 games in my list that were so good I could not leave them off. So my games are either released in 2020 or 2019. Alright, to kick us off, I want to share with you my favorite family game of the year. This game took me by surprise completely. I honestly didn't want to like it, but I did. I mean, it's by Reiner Knizia. It was nominated for a game of the year for family game of the year. It's a legacy game. I mean, it's got so many things that I want to like, and yet I still kind of felt myself pulling back. But I played my city and oh my gosh, it grew on me. I loved, I loved the changing rule structure and system as you kept opening envelopes for new scenarios. You only play it eight times and for a legacy game that's pretty short. Now when I say eight times that means a session. You're playing three 20 to 30 minute games inside each session and each session kind of has a theme or it has something that builds on the previous rule set from before. It's great. Stickers, you add them to your board. Everyone's board is going to look different at the end of the game. You write on things, you open up envelopes, you add cards and pieces and tiles. And ultimately, My City is just a tile laying game at its heart. It's about fitting all of these kind of Tetris pieces together on your map in the most efficient way possible. This is a great family game. I would suggest playing with as many players as you can. The max is four. If you play with four, it feels like it absolutely fits the, the time frame and the um, rewards for each game. When you win a game, come in second, or you come in third or fourth it feels very balanced with four players. So I would suggest playing with four and again, eight sessions, you get three games in each of the sessions. This game is absolutely a great buy for family and friends. I hope you enjoy my city as much as I did. So moving on to the category of roll or flip and rights, I kind of put them in the same category but I do still see a difference between flip and rights and roll and rights and the winner of this category for me in 2020 is Trails of Tucana. I really like this game. <laughs> like, I really like it. It's crazy. I kind of just keep wanting to play it and I like that there are two map sides and so you've got the small island which takes uh, two rounds through the deck and you've got a large island that is very well balanced and you go through the deck three times. So if you want a longer, more complex game and you're familiar with the system, go to that big island side. If you're still learning the game and you want a shorter game, use, this, use the small island side. It's perfect. So in this game, you are flipping two cards and you are drawing a line between those two terrains that show on the cards flipped. So what you're trying to do in Trails of Tucana is you are trying to connect 
cities. There are five and you have to connect A to A, B to B, C to C, and so forth. Now, along the way, you're also trying to connect all of these sites, like your sightseeing. And so there are these symbols. And if you connect a symbol back to a city, then you get to mark it off on your map. And every time you mark one of those off, you're earning victory points and you're working towards getting a really cool bonus of an extra line that you can draw on your map. It's a super fun way to create an interactive gameplay with really what is just an individual player board. You're not getting in each other's way. You're not taking resources from other players. Um, you're not taking dice or anything. You just look at the cards and you can make a line from one terrain to the other based on what's showing anywhere on your map. There's not even like adjacency rules. It's so creative and free and thoughtful. I just, again, I really, really like Trails of Tucana and I can't stop playing it. I like both sides. I like the small island. I like the big island. And you should definitely be playing Trails of Tucana if you have not heard of it yet. It's super small and affordable here in this little box. You get plenty of sheets to play with. Uh, and I just find it to be a very engaging flip and write game. Okay, moving on to my favorite card game that I played this year. Yet again, I found myself wanting to play this game again and again. And I really like how it's designed by someone whose game I've played before and really appreciate. And yet it still feels like a wholly unique game based on the 1 to 100 card system. It is Ohanami. This is uh, designed by the same person who made the game. And in the game, there are cards 1 to 100 that you are trying to order uh, in ascending or descending order. In Ohanami, every player has their own player area. And you are trying to create pools or collections of cards that go in ascending or descending order. So you still have the cards 1 to 100. It goes a little bit higher in this game. Uh, and then you also have that ascending, descending. You want to put cards uh, close together so that you have as few gaps as possible. Now, there are scoring rounds in this in which only certain cards score early on, but they continue to score. And then you keep layering in new scoring cards until you get to the end after the third round. Then you get to score these cherry blossom cards that are only scored at the end, and that's a set collection. This game is great. It's so clean. And I absolutely have to give kudos to the art. The design of each card follows a similar theme with color, but each individual card in the entire deck is unique. They are so beautiful. This, this deck of cards is gorgeous, and I love the system, and I think that every time I play, I try just a slightly different strategy, and it totally matters if you play with two, three, or four players. In a four-player game, you are going through every single card in the deck. Cards are just like, it's, it's perfectly divided. You're not going to have any excess left in the box. With a three-player game, you're not going to see certain cards in the deck, period. No one's even going to get to look at them. And in a two-player game, even fewer cards. And so you have to take that into consideration as you are designing your columns of ascending or descending numbers. This is great. You're always looking at what everyone else is doing in the game to make sure I can't pass this on to this person because they really need this and to be perfect for their column because everything is public information. Mine is the cards that you're looking at, that you're picking and then uh, passing. So there's a great card drafting uh, mechanic and there's also your um, way of scoring and you also have three columns that you have to balance which direction you're going and what cards you're going to place on your turn. It is super clever, really fast, very fun, and just so stinking beautiful. Ohanami's a great card game. All right, I'd like to move on to my best cooperative game of the year that I played in 2020. And before I get to the one that I highly, highly recommend, I want to talk about two runners up very briefly, just to let you know that they are really good and you probably already know what I'm talking about because I have made previous videos on actually all three of these games, the, the game I'm suggesting now, and then the other two runners-up. The first runner-up is Project Elite. 
If you want to watch my detailed playthrough of Project Delete, please go and check out that video. I highly recommend Project Delete for a cooperative, exciting, real-time uh, adventure gaming with your friends. My second runner-up is Stygian Society. I also made a video or two about Stygian Society. That is a wonderful, wonderful kind of dungeon crawl adventure, mid-bosses, bosses, and you're just you're just slugging it out um, with this wonderful cube tower with your friends and you're trying to defeat this wizard. It's a wonderful game. Stygian Society is something you should be playing. And if you want to watch those videos, please go and check my channel for those to learn a little bit more about how that game works, what it looks like, and what you should be excited about. So on to my suggestion for my cooperative game of 2020. It is, <laughs> anybody surprised? Yeah, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I just finished this about a week and a half ago with my group and it was just fun. I, I love the humor, I love the joy, I love the strategy. I honestly think those memorable scenarios from this game is mostly created by the ideas that the gamers go into the game with. And what I mean by that is I had all these plans. You know, I'm the demolitionist, if you have seen my previous Jaws of the Lion video. And I was like, I'm gonna go in and do this, and I'm gonna go over here, and don't worry guys, I got this handle, I can do this and that, and push people and do... And then the second a card is flipped, or a door is opened, new rules come out, and I just go, my plans! They're dashed, right? Like, I can't do what I want to do. And you have to, like, immediately recover. And you have to talk out your plans with your fellow gamers because someone might have a really great idea. And what this game encourages is every player to posit their suggestion for how to most effectively complete the challenge at hand, the scenario. And you really only get through it by teamwork. This is literally the most cooperative board game I've played um, this year, but maybe all the years. It honestly requires a full-on team effort, and I'm always surprised and delighted by how well my teammates stand up to the task. We played through everything that was possible for the campaign series, and it was so fun. I can recommend Jaws of the Lion enough for people who are unfamiliar with Gloomhaven or just don't want the hassle of unboxing a box that is three times bigger than this, maybe four times bigger. And so there's less chits and bits. There's a wonderful glossy uh, spiral notebook that has all of the maps set out for you, tells you where to put everything, and it's just so streamlined. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I'm a strategy gamer and that's really where my heart lies. And so I had a very, very hard time selecting just one game to represent my favorite strategy game that I played in 2020. I do have one that rises to the top, but I also have a couple recommendations. And so I'd like to mention my runners up first before I get to my suggestion. Uh, one game that took me by surprise and is just so clean and streamlined and works so well for just honestly like reasonable thinking and logic and uh, doing math is Smartphone Inc. I think Smartphone Inc. is um, surprisingly good because I think the cover and the idea like just the fact that there's a guy with that looks like he's from Silicon Valley and he's just got a beard and glasses on the front cover. It just doesn't look dynamic and exciting. Uh, the theme is cell phones and technology and I think everyone's like, ooh, that sounds boring. But you should definitely give Smartphone Inc. a try. It is, again, very, very clever, very streamlined, very player interactive and the game took me by surprise how much I appreciated the turn-by-turn, round-by-round gameplay of Smartphone Inc. Another runner-up for strategy game is Expedition to Newdale. This game is a board game version of Oh My Goods, which is a card game. And as much as I love Oh My Goods, I can't win it. But 
Expedition to New Dale really amps up the play, the player interaction, the bonuses, and the very simple function of the cards in Oh My Goods and makes it a really, really cool board game. The other thing is that there's kind of a campaign that's built into Expedition to New Dale. And so if you're really loving it, there are packages of cards that say don't open. And so you get to continually uncover new gameplay, new strategy, and new elements to the board game. It's a wonderful, wonderful investment, particularly if you like Oh My Goods. Now in Oh My Goods, the basic function is you have cards and those cards are either going to serve as the uh, function of the resource or you can build it and then building it costs money and you also get victory points in the top corner and then it becomes like a factory. And so uh, you can build on factories, basic to intermediate to more um, you know, involved or expert that re rely on those uh, raw or crude resources. It's a really, really clever game and Expedition to New Dale just amps it up and definitely shows as a runner-up in my strategy games. Another runner-up for strategy game is In the Hall of the Mountain King. This game is cool. It's got such a great theme. It is just super clean. I love the, the what you do on your turn. I love the Tetris building. I love the race against people in the same area with you and you're building on the, the central board. I love using special actions. It's just so cool. And the way you get resources by building cards on top and then when you use them, then you do and you get to fill everything in beneath it. Oh, so cool. And so I think in the Hall of the Mountain King, while it's a really challenging title to remember, golly, it took me forever just to remember the title. <laughs> Every time I want to talk about it, I'm like, well, the what? And the why? Why is it two prepositional phrases? That's that's seriously the most awkward sentence construction ever. Anyway, OK, that aside, you should play in the Hall of the Mountain King. It is super, super cool. And for my last runner-up in strategy game that I played in 2020, it's Beyond the Sun. I liked that this was a really kind of pared down, smaller Eclipse. I mean, I'm really excited about the second edition of Eclipse. It's sitting right over there. But Beyond the Sun does this science with the exploration to planets and the technology track really well. And there's not that much to pull out. The board is enormous. It's way too big for what it needs to be for the technology track. <laughs> Meanwhile, the exploration board is like teeny tiny. But you only put four playing cards on the exploration track and you put lots more cards on the technology track. But it was really fun. It's so, again, clean, clever, pared down. If you want that science, kind of spacefaring exploration technology investment worker placement game beyond the sun is really really good okay now it's time to move on to my number one strategy game that i played in 2020. it's a great one and yes i've already made a video for this game so if you want to check it out go look in my youtube channel for crystal palace this game is simply just stunning. It's so rich in history and theme, and I love that so much. There is super high player interaction in this game, and you have so many choices to make. Honestly, this is a worker placement, and not only is the worker placement like a big deal, it's the resolution of the worker placement. It's just so smart to use player dice, not to roll them, but as representative of how much money you've invest in your worker die, which is that worker placement function. And so everyone has a little uh, cover that they put over the dice and they simply pay for how many pips are showing and then you get to use those dice. So in the dice selection, you are investing money and you hope that you've invested just the right amount of money to get exactly what you need without spending a dollar more because in this game, you are poor all the time. There's so much about pecking order and, you know, paying the most money to play your worker out to certain places to get patents and to um, hire these, uh, you know, intellectual innovators. Uh, Crystal Palace is about the 1851 World Fair 
and there's just so much that you have to keep in mind. You have to advertise for your country to make sure that you are heard. You need to go and invest in um, specific locations that are going to give you research and, like I said, innovators and characters that give you the victory points and the timing. I cannot emphasize enough how much this game relies on timing and pecking order. It's just super, super rich in player interaction. You need to think so many turns ahead, but then you're almost paralyzed that you can't make a choice during the turn that you're in. And I kind of like a really complex strategy thinker game like Crystal Palace. Thank you so much for watching my picks from 2020 and 2019, if you're counting. I love these games. I think there's something there for everybody, and I hope you appreciated the way I broke down my picks into genres of games as opposed to just my top 10, because I feel like it's hard for me to compare, um, let's say, In the Hall of the Mountain King to Ohanami. They're just so different, and so I wanted to put them into different categories because I think Ohanami is a great game. It's a great card game, and I think you should play it. But it's not in the Hall of the Mountain King. It's not Jaws of the Lion, you know? So for me, the genres and the categories made sense. So thanks for sticking with me. If you have any suggestions of your own, put that in the comments below. I played a lot of games this year, but those were definitely the games, for me, that rose to the surface. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.